Uh, so good morning. I'm in the un unenviable position of preventing you people from eating. So I'll try to um, make this a little quick. My name is George Papin. I'm the vice chair of the electrical and computer engineering department here at the Jacobs School. And what I'd like to do is talk about uh, ECE, uh, electrical and computer engineering, and answer uh, questions. Uh, 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 Frieder mentioned that uh, I, we get lots of questions, and one of the main questions is, what the heck is the difference between ECE and CSE in the Jacobs School? So hopefully I'll answer that. But ECE, uh, ECE here, basically, I want to talk about three things today and uh, emphasize some things that Frieder said in his talk. The first thing is, what is electrical engineering? And basically, it's a very broad discipline that makes uh, hardware and, um, and uh, software for uh, modern information systems, anything involving electricity, typically. Um, I also want to talk about how EC students uh, interact with one another, and I'm actually going to show videos from one of the main student organizations on both uh, interacting with students in a technical fashion and socially. And then finally, I want to talk about uh, the research that we do and, and how it can help solve societal problems. So if you're kind of wondering what EC does, I just want to walk through basically a modern communication system starting with the chips inside computers, electrical engineers, and, com and, and computer engineers design chips. They design what are called the backplanes. They then go into computers. Uh, on a whole other aspect, there's a very significant um, component of electrical engineering that designs all the wireless systems, the, the iPhones and all the infrastructure associated with uh, wireless technology. Uh, we also design the things where the wireless and computers come together to begin to form information networks. And that can be on a campus level, a building level, a metropolitan level, like San Diego, or worldwide. Electrical engineering is, 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 involves all aspects of that. In terms of what you will do as students, what I want to talk about is one of the things that Frieder emphasized is that the technical education is becoming um, not necessarily a commodity, but it's becoming less important in, in the sense of how you differentiate yourself in terms of what skill set you're going to be able to demonstrate when you leave here relative to other, other people. And I, I want to echo what Frieder said in, in the sense that the students that we want to turn out, our fundamental basis is a great technical education, but we want to provide more than that. And there's many venues that the Jacobs School is set up to do that in terms of a dynamic learning environment. So for example, with respect to electrical engineering, we of course have all of the backbone technologies that are involved with the modern information age, from communication circuits, photonics, which is what I'm interested in, signal processing, and computer engineering, which is a joint program between our department and computer science and engineering. Another significant aspect of your education in addition to just the technical uh, coursework is the interaction with EC faculty. And because we're a research university, there's significant opportunities to be able to do that. So there's undergraduate research, and I'm going to show a project that I'm involved with that we've had undergraduates work with. There's student hourly work. And there's also another type of interaction which we believe at Jacobs is as strong or as, as significant a component as your, your formal education. And that's the education that you get from your peers. Um, we have, I think, 29 student organizations in JSOE. And they provide a whole different way for you to learn, either uh, through team building and so on. One of the students that you saw in the JSOE presentation, Jordan Ree, saw this car driving around when he was a freshman. And it was called NACAR. Jordan spent four years, and he, was so, he liked it so much, he developed his own competition called Viacar. And he started that last year, all run through the student organization, brought teams from six, five or six UC campuses here on campus to run his own competition. And I just want to show a brief clip of what that looked like. So this is a Viacar competition, uh, all set up through a student organization with teams from a variety of UC campuses.
So I'm going to cut that short because of time. The, um, all those cars were completely built by students, uh, not for credit, typically. And, just, uh, and, and if you talk to students who were uh, involved in that project, as, as, as we've heard, they learn as much in a practical aspect, in a team working aspect, as their formal course studies. And that's something you need to keep track of, is it's not just your formal course studies they are going to set you apart as you go on in life. So I want to address a question that everyone asks typically here, is ECE, CSE, what's going on at UCSD? Because this is an interesting um, uh, uh, dividing part between departments here. And typically, ECE is a broad major. It covers many, many different aspects of electrical engineering. And by and large, CSE is focused on computing systems. But if it involves hardware, it can be in both departments, uh, computing systems. RF or wireless tends to be only in ECE, but the networking aspect tends to be in CSE. So if that sounds all kind of confusing, which major is right, is what's, what's the difference? It kind of depends. And one of the things you should take away from here is kind of getting a fee feeling of the de departments. The, the, um, the departments interact very, very closely. And what I want to do is I want to give an example based off of research that we do in building um, data centers of the future. This is, this is research that is collaborative between both departments. And it involves basically the fact that modern data centers are very power hungry. And believe it or not, they're located right next to inexpensive power. So Google's locating these up in the Pacific Northwest, close to hydropower, which is inexpensive because that's a big chunk of their bill, is just the power to run them. And the question really is, how are we going to build data centers in the future to be able to uh, have them be more energy efficient and, and be able to scale? Modern data centers can take up to over 100,000 individual servers in a single center. And the question is, when you look at the interconnection, that's all cable. That's, if, if, you, if you're wondering what all that yellow is, there's so much electrical cable there that it basically makes a wall of yellow. So there's some real interesting issues associated with making modern data centers. And um, we have a, a, a collaborative project between ECE and CSE. And, it's, and it basically involves the following. You, 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 you take several racks of computers. You buy two pallets worth of disk drives. And I mean a pallet. That's how many disk drives you have. You buy electrical switches. You buy optical switches, which is a rather unique aspect. You wire it all up. In this case, we're wiring up 24 computers using fiber connected in a ring. So this is a network, a ring network of 24 computers. Each one of those computers is running 10 gigabits per second. And so that each computer transmits its own optical wavelength, the total data running around that ring is 240 gigabits per second. Sounds like a lot, but believe it or not, that's that's middling in terms of how much you can actually get on an individual fiber right now. So if you look at this system, if you look at this system and what it involves in terms of various skill sets, there's certain aspects of this. If you're interested in developing, say, optical or electrical switches, the actual hardware, the hardware tends to be an ECE. If you're interested in programming the computers and the network interface on how how the uh, information gets passed and back and forth between the computers, that tends to be in computer science and engineering. If you're interested in designing the hardware, the optics that, uh, that interface the ring, the fiber ring, that tends to be an ECE. Okay? Now, none of these is absolute, and there's all kinds of cross-collaboration. What I've, what I've shown you here is an ongoing research project right now that's done between uh, professors in EC and CSE. Uh, there have been undergraduate students that have been involved in this. And this type of research is the foundation for the next generation of, of, of data centers. And in fact, th this research is being funded by uh, Google right now. So in addition to the opportunities for coursework and so on, there's other aspects of our research that have a societal impact. And that's what I want to talk about right now, is that ECE is actively developing the information and energy technologies for the future. That can be green energy, uh, energy efficient wireless communications, and energy efficient scalable data centers, which is what I just talked about, cloud computing. There's also comprehensive uh, uh, research activities 
uh, again, emphasizing what uh, Frieder mentioned across many, many different areas. So there's a center for energy research within uh, UCSD. There's a center for wireless communications. All of these centers are cross-disciplinary involving multiple departments, and there's opportunities to do research in all of them. The, the data center that we just talked about, the impetus for that data center was a center fu uh, funded by the National Sci Science Foundation, specifically associated with developing uh, uh, optical or photonic technologies for next generation uh, um, uh, infrastructure. And, and there's many, many others on campus. So one of the things that's unique about UCSD is because it's relatively new, we've been able to foster this uh, extraordinary cross-disciplinary interaction between departments that traditional universities that have been around a lot longer, they tend to get a little bit more stilted in terms of being able to interact. And that's really benefited the ability to be able not only to do research, but also to give that kind of cross-disciplinary team aspect to you. Because again, when you leave as undergraduates, that's going to be how your key differentiator is relative to other institutions. So uh, I showed earlier about the uh, IEEE with respect to uh, Viacar. Um, the, uh, the student organizations also provide the social glue for, um, for students here. So you can interact with other students. These, these are pictures taken from the IEEE picnic um, uh, last year. You can interact with professors. This, this was a, um, this was the, that picture is from a, um, um, a, a dinner after that Viacar competition that I just showed. You can do outreach opportunities both with respect to community colleges and with respect to high school, or high school. and you can just have fun. So, so every year they, they throw a whole bunch of junk out in a parking lot and people uh, walk, uh, take that junk and they make uh, basically soap boxes out of them and race them down a hill here. So the student organizations is another vehicle for you to be able to interact both professionally and socially. And I wanna, I wanna uh, basically conclude with just a little short clip of a pumpkin carving contest that IEEE put on. So, and afterwards they, uh, they put in um, LEDs to these pumpkins. that video about four times and it only broke up when we put it up there. Well, that's kind of nice. Okay, well, there you go. So, summary, why, why ECE at UCSD? So, the UC has many excellent schools. I believe many of you uh, uh, applied and were admitted into other schools uh, other than UCSD. Why here? Well, hopefully you've gotten the, the message from all the presentations today that this is a very dynamic uh, learning and research environment which goes well beyond your formal coursework. I believe the real value add of this campus is all the other things from ties to the ability to be able to do internships at other uh, worldwide, those things are going to be the key differentiators for your career. Um, we're focused on leading information and energy technologies and we still have room to grow. There's a whole another building being built within the engineering school of over 200,000 square feet, I believe, of research space. We're still growing as an engineering school. Um, why ECE? Because you can, make, you, you, can, you can begin to make the backbone of the future information infrastructure and the energy infrastructure. You can make friends in numerous ways to interact professionally and socially, and you can make a difference, either through outreach to students and building a green future. And with that, um, I'll conclude. And...